Okay, now we are going to talk about the cytokinin hormone signaling pathway. Cytokinin hormone is involved with the process of cell growth instigator, right? The process of how cytokinin hormone signals, to understand that you need to know two component signaling system. And there are two types of two component signaling system that I am going to show. One is the very basic one, another one is involving uh, uh, accessory protein in between. So let's see. In normal two component system, one component is the sensory histidine kinase domain. And the other segment is the response regulator domain. Now the sensory histidine kinase domain is divided into two different parts. One is the input region, another one is the transmitter region. While the response regulator segment is com composed of the receiver region as well as the output region. Now let's look at the signaling that works. We need a ligand for cell signaling, right? So whatever ligand it is, it will come and bind to the input domain and as a result of input domain of histidine kinase and as a result the transmitter gets phosphorylated. Obviously they will take the phosphate from the ATP. This phosphorylated transmitter is now active and now ready to phosphorylate the receiver domain of the response regulator. Once the receiver domain is phosphorylated, then the output genes start transcribing the response genes and they will make the mRNA, they will go outside of the cyto, outside of the nucleus and they will be translated to the distant proteins. This is an action of a two component signal system where these two separate components are not directly linked but they become activated by the phosphorylation on phosphorylation events. Now let's see the two component system involving a third protein. Here we also see the hybrid sensor histidine kinase and we also know we need a response regulator just like an ordinary two component system. But this time we have a third segment that is AHP in this case histidine phosphotransfer protein. So what is the role of this AHP? The role of AHP is to take the phosphate from the hybrid sensor histidine kinase and transfer it to the response regulator and this transfer so this AHP helps in the crosstalk between the sensory element and response regulator element. So now let's see how signaling will work with AHP inside this particular picture. So we again we know that histidine kinase is divided into input it also have histidine kinase section, the actual kinase or phosphorylating domain and there is the receiver region. And the response regulator is divided into again receiver and obviously output region. So now let's see a ligand and how the process works again. So let's start with the ligand. The ligand will come and bind to the input region and thus the histidine kinase will be phosphorylated. The autophosphorylation of histidine kinase will be done and this autophosphorylation of histidine kinase will transfer the phosphate into receiver domain and the receiver domain again will be phosphorylating the AHP taking the phosphate from ATP while all the phosphorylation process is going on. And once AHP is phosphorylated that is histidine phosphotransfer protein is phosphorylated the phosphorylated form of AHP will again phosphorylate the receiver of the response regulatory element and thus it activates the output region output segment will start transcribing the response regulatory genes so this is how the two component system will work including ahp histidine phosphotransfer protein in between now let's see how exactly this whole signaling pathway for cytokinin will work and to understand that we need to know few things. We need to know the receptor, the ligand as well as the other components involved with it. Just like any signaling pathway we know here, the ligand is the cytokinin itself. Cytokinin itself is the ligand and 
Cree protein, Cree 1 or CRE1 acts as a receptor in this case. CRE full form is cytokinin response 1 gene. Okay, and this Cree protein contains cytokinin binding domains which are known as chase domains. C H A S E chase domains. Okay, so apart from that, the other components involved here is AHP, which we have already understood. Now, the example of this cytokinin response element are AHK2, AHK3, AHK4 and so on in different uh, organisms. AHK full form is Arabidopsis ligand binding kinase protein. So, it is normally found in Arabidopsis plants. So, now let's begin the process of detailed signaling by cytokinin. So, this is the cytokinin ligand and we know we need to have a receptor and I know that the receptor here is this and it, this receptor is AHK2, AHK3, AHK4 whatever known as CRE type of receptors and it has a chase domain. So these are the chase domain where the cytokinin will properly bind and interact in the very first time and it also has this histidine kinase region obviously and it will have the response elements uh, which will rally the signal to the AHP further and the process will uh, be continuous inside the cell. So let's see the cytokinin is going to bind to the chase domain and while the cytokinin binds to the chase domain there is a dimerization of receptors and this dimerization is done when the cytokinin binds to them and as a result of dimerization we know that the histidine kinase region will be phosphorylated and ATP will be utilized and ATP will be hydrolyzed into ADP and PI and the histidine kinase region which is a cytosolic site will be phosphorylated and now after the phosphorylation of histidine kinase it will phosphorylate this res response elements okay and now once the D is phosphorylated then comes the third player that is AHP. Remember the role of AHP we have already discussed histidine phosphotransfer protein. Okay, and this AHP will be phosphorylated by this T. It will phosphorylate AHP, obviously taking phosphate group from ATP hydrolysis. And now, once phosphorylated, the AHP is active, it acts as a transcription factor, it goes inside the nucleus. And then we know inside the nucleus we have type B ARR. ARR, what do you mean by ARR here? Arabidopsis in this case, response regulators. Okay. So these ARR proteins, there are two different type B and type A. Type A is more dominant over type B. But first, this phosphorylated AHP activates type B ARR. And we know type B ARR also has a receiver and an output region. And so AHP is going to bind to the receiver and it's going to phosphorylate the receiver. Once the receiver of type B ARR is phosphorylated, the output is active and type A ARR transcription will begin because type B here regulates the transcription of type A ARR. So type A ARR transcription starts. And type A ARR will be produced in a moment. Apart from that, this type B ARR also instigate and influence the transcription of cytokinin response regulatory genes, but in very less amount. So once the type A ARR are already produced, then this type A ARR is present in the nucleus. And then what will happen? This AHP will also bind to the type A ARR. And it will also phosphorylate the type A ARR and as a result of type A ARR phosphorylation, it will start making cytokinin response mRNAs and those mRNAs will move from nucleus to the cytoplasm will be translated into the cytokinin response proteins. On the other hand, this type A ARR also has an important role to block the action of type B uh, ARR in this case. So once the type A ARR is produced in the adequate amount, 
it not only signals the cytokine response element but also it not only produces the cytokine response mRNA but also inhibits the role and activity of type B ARR. Thus we can say that type A ARR here is regulating itself and its own concentration. So kind of autoregulation that we are seeing here.